What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and today we are going to discuss we are back with the Gita series, the Mahabharata series and spirituality is back again after astrology and today's topic is lessons from Bhishma Pitama. Yes, 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 Bhishma Pitama of the Mahabharat. Yes, nobody other than him should be there today. All right, so if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and then go there and to that the services page and then you see the options and then please mail me okay just don't mail me that oh i want a consultation then again i have to send you the link of the web page okay there you go before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there so now, who is this character? Yes, Pishma Pitama. He is the, oh my God, I don't know how to introduce this person. I mean, he has been there since the time <laughs> the Mahabharata started. So he was the son of the great, great, great Shantanu and Mother Ganges. So he, that is why he was known as Ganga Putra always, yes, which means he was the son of Mother Ganges. So he and uh, his father was Shantanu who was, he was a Chakravarti Samarat, which means that Shantanu was able to conquer all the directions, all the places, all the territories, all the lands Shantanu had under his control. And he was a fabulous leader. And once upon a time, what happened was Shantanu, he uh, saw this Ganga and then he approached her and said that I want to marry you. And then Ganga said that I will marry you, but there's a condition that you cannot ask me any question. Oh my God, that's very dangerous. But then Shantana was so much obsessed by seeing Ganga that he said, yes, why not? I will never ask you any question. We will get married. And then what happens? Ganga, she, as soon as she gets pregnant and she delivers the baby, she will go and throw it in the waters. <laughs> so Shantana was devastated when he saw this. He used to think that, oh my God, why is this cruel lady doing like this? But then, because he was so attached, he could never ask. And so like that, she did for seven times. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven children she threw it in the river. And then when it was time for the eighth child, he could not tolerate this. He said, oh, you cruel lady. Enough is enough. <laughs> Why are you just throwing these children in the river? Don't your heart cry you know being the mother you are throwing them and then ganga said no th there was a curse of the vasus which <coughs> had to be honored yes the vasus had got a curse vasus are the servant demigods which are there in the heavenly planets heavenly realms and then because of that uh, they had to take one birth in this buloka yes in prithiloka and then the leader of this person, of these uh, Ashtavasus, the eight Vasus, was this Deos. His name was Deos. So this Deo was none other than Bhishma. Yes. So and then he said, she said that because he was the leader, so he had to take the majority of the uh, sinful karma, the negative karma, and then that is why he was destined to suffer in this life. And he would be a very great personality. And then. One day what happened, Ganga, then immediately after that, Ganga took uh, him, uh, this son, with her. And Shantanu said, why are you taking him with you? Then Ganga said, I will go to the heavens and I will give him training from Brihaspati and from Shukracharya, from Parshuram and all these people, great personality. So please submit your son to me. And then Shantanu said, yes, go and take him, teach him, train him and then send him to me because he is going to be the next king. Yes, undisputedly. And then what happens? One day, uh, Shantanu was going around from his palace and then he sees that there is a, uh, this, the river Ganges has been blocked, yes, by the arrows of a young teenage boy. Then he was surprised to see the power, the prowess, the strength, the might, the fear, the courage of this uh, teenage boy. And then he asked, who the hell are you, man, that you have blocked this Ganges? Ganga ko... You, you are blocked. You are so powerful. Who are you, man? <laughs> and then he became angry when he saw that. Yes, because that was causing floods. And then he said, he didn't say actually, he said, my arrows will tell you who I am. And then immediately they were about to fight, but Ganga Devi appeared and said, 
Oh great king, why are you fighting with your own son? Because he is none other than your son and he is going to be the next monarch. And then Shantanu embraced his son and his name was Devrat that time. Okay, And then Devrat was coined as the next emperor. He became the Yuvaraj which means that he will be the next king. Yes, so Shantanu had declared that. And then what happened? Uh, one day Shantanu became uh, obsessed with uh, another uh, lady. Her name was Satyavati as we all know. So then what happened? Satyavati's father said that, Oh, I cannot offer my daughter's hand in marriage to you because you already have a son named Devrat. Yes, and he's going to be the next king. So what will my daughter get if he get, she gets married to you? So then Shantanu said, no, that can't happen. Devrat is going to be the next king. But because of that, he was very depressed. Yes. And then Devrat, as a very obedient and a very intelligent son, he understood the, that there's some problem. And then he went and asked to Shantanu, my dear father, what's the problem? Why are you so morose? But then Shantanu didn't reply. How can you say to your son? Yes. And then uh, Devrat goes and asks to the charioteer of Shantanu that what's the problem and then the charioteer explains that that's the problem and then uh, this person goes to the father of Satyavati and then he says oh what's the problem and then his father says her father says that oh you are the problem because of you I cannot give my daughter's hand in marriage to your father yes because you will be the next king and then Devrat he took that great oath which was known as Bhishma Pratigya yes and then he said that, oh, but there's another problem. Satyavati's father said, but if you don't rule, that's okay. But your descendants, your sons, they will want to rule. So even if you don't marry, uh, sorry, even if you don't become the king, your sons, they will pose a threat to my daughter's sons. Yes. So he was very calculative. And then Bhishma said, then Devrat, that time he was Devrat, yes. And then Devrat said, yes, if that is the case, I take a vow today. I will not sit in the throne and I will remain a celibate lifelong. I will not marry. And then as soon as he took that vow, there were flowers and rains which were pouring from the sky. The demigods appeared and they blessed him. And everybody sh started shouting the word Bhishma, 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 which means one who has taken the great oath. Now, such a dangerous vow that is yes that is known as Bhishma Pratigya that I will not marry lifelong yes my god it's so difficult why is it difficult not because it is a vow of celibacy but saints and sages also take the vow of celibacy but you will never hear that somebody says oh you have taken a Bhishma Pratigya but Bhishma was staying in the royal court yes he was a part of the royalty he was so then for people who are staying into royalty and in the palace, generally there are lots of queens and they are also very good looking and then there are always other kings coming and then they also give you keep giving you proposals of other queens and staying in that kind of an environment with all the delights and with the enjoyment, then you remain a celibate. That is why he is revered throughout the scriptures, especially the Mahabharata, yes? And uh, then Bhishma, he is also one of the 12 Mahajans as it is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Swambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Kumaro, Kapilo, Manu, Prahlado, Janako, Bhishma, Balir, Vaya, Saki, Vayam. So the word Bhishma comes in that. Which means he is one of the 12 great, great, great authorities in the line of the Paramparas. From whom, from whose life we can learn different examples. So Bhishma Pitama exemplifies all the great, beautiful, amazing traits. Yes, as the Shrimad Bhagavatam says that Yasyasti Bhaktir Bhagwati Akinchana Sarvair Gunais Tatra Sama Sate Sura. All the beautiful qualities of the demigods manifest when somebody is going towards Vasudev, Lord Vishnu, and Bhishma Pitama was one of the great 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 devotees of lord krishna and he always loved to stay with him he always used to chant krishna's names and the whole uh, basically if i have to speak about bhishma i have to speak the entire mahabharata so that's not possible in this video but what i would say is bhishma's most important quality is that his determination for his commitment towards the vows which he had taken never failed yes and later on he had to side unfortunately with the uh, kurus even when he didn't want because 
he was uh, having that duty he i mean that's not exactly a duty but you can call it as an obligation so and later on when he was fighting he was fighting so vigorously he was he was as if he was like yamraj yes and he was fighting 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 for one day two day three day three days four days five days six days seven days eight days my god nine complete days bhishma fought and on the end of the ninth day yes lord krishna said that's it enough is enough and bhishma also had this boon of ichan mrityu which means when that when he would only die when he wants yes so when bhishma went to shantanu and said you can marry satyavati now there's no problem and then shantanu was so pleased shantanu said i give you this blessing that till the time you don't want death personified will not come near you yamraj will not come to you <laughs> yes so then bhishma he became almost immortal <laughs> yes i mean you can die whenever you want that's almost like immortality yes nobody can kill you and then on the ni- night of the ninth day of the kurukshetra war bhishma pitama had created such a ruckus in the army of the pandavas that lord krishna understood that that's it now there's nobody in this entire field who can defeat this great bhishma so i only have to do the thankless task and then lord krishna jumps up from his chariot his angavastra falls down from his uh, chest and from his shoulders and then lord krishna's eyes are red like coal it is appearing that he will burn of the entire universe like lord shiva's third eye opens and he burns of everything whatever is there so then lord krishna takes up the wheel of a chariot and then he runs towards bhishma taking that chariot wheel and then he is about to throw it and arjuna goes and stops krishna and arjuna says today i will kill bhishma please spare yourself because krishna had taken a vow that i will not lift any weapon but because of bhishma because bhishma was so great yes that nobody could defeat him lord krishna broke his vow actually he didn't break it because the wheel was uh, not a weapon okay so that's what uh, lord krishna does yes he breaks the vow but technically it is not broken also that only he can do not everybody can replicate so finally on the ninth day this thing happened and everybody was seeing this my god what a beautiful interaction between krishna and bhishma yes so then uh, bhishma finally he surrendered and he said that it will be great fortune for me to die at your hands please throw this wheel and rip my head apart and then krishna said no i will not do that that is arjuna's task so arjuna is the one who will dismantle you and then of course that night yudhishthir goes and asks to bhishma that how to defeat you because unless you are there we cannot obtain victory and then bhishma says that bring this uh shikhandi which is the, who is there who was amba in her previous life here yeah? she had taken a she had done lot of penance and lord shiva had given her the boon that you will be the cause of bhishma's death and then finally in the day number 10 of the kurukshetra war arjuna and shikhandi they dismantled bhishma he fell in the bed of arrows and finally after the kurukshetra war was over everybody died everybody was perished only the pandavas and krishna remained then yudhishthir maharaj goes to krishna one day and krishna is in deep meditation he is in trance and yudhishthir maharaj asks krishna who are you meditating upon and then krishna says i am meditating upon your grandsire the great bhishma pitama yes so now it is time that we go to him and we take lessons and then Lord Krishna along with the Pandavas and Draupadi they go to Bhishma Pitama and then Bhishma Pitama gives them lessons yes so there are different versions of the story which says some says that Bhishma gave them lessons for 43 days some say for 47 days some say for 63 days okay but that's not important here the important point is that even when he was in his death bed yes he was still giving out pearls of wisdom about raj dharma about politics about economics about spirituality about religion about duties of a king duties of a husband duties of a wife he was the perfect personality to speak on that and finally when 
the time of uh, the when sun transited into the uh, this uttarayan started then bhishma left this planet and with him departed a truck load uh, i mean what you say now it's like culture has gone when he departed so it's like a total era of culture and religion which has departed with bhishma so we will be making more videos on bhishma and it's not possible to speak in one video but the most important lesson which he teaches is that our determination to do right and to stay committed to a spiritual path is highly essential he had all the possibilities and every chance to get married or to enjoy or to not follow what he was supposed to follow but he didn't do like that he always did what he should have done not that oh i want to enjoy so let me enjoy who is going to say what yes so obviously if you are not knowing who bhishma is then it is very difficult for you to understand from this video but if you already know then i hope you are able to get a gist of what i'm saying yes and bhishma time and again you know, military prowess my god he was the one who had to fight with parshuram for 28 days they fought and then ultimately he was about to defeat parshuram but then the demigods appeared and says that do not use this speci specific weapon which you are supposed to use because then parshuram will be defeated and he will be humiliated throughout, throughout the three worlds that parshuram is defeated so please do not humiliate your guru like this and then go and uh, surrender yourself and then parshuram was extremely happy then parshuram said that yes you are the best disciple i have ever had till now yes and then he was so happy that bhishma was his disciple and then finally so many instances are there time and again bhishma always ensured that he protected the pandavas yes headed by yudhishthir bhim arjun nakul and sadev and he always tried that there is no conflict between the kurus and the pandavas he tried his best he and people like vidur yes they always tried their best to avoid conflicts and they always tried that there was some kind of a deal or a agreement between the kurus and the pandavas but unfortunately these four personalities they never agreed to it yes headed by shakuni dushasan duryodhan and their best friends karna yes karna is their best friend so these four personalities never agreed to what bhishma said and bhishma always used to give good guidance good counsel to the king dhritarashtra but dhritarashtra never listened because he always wanted duryodhana to sit in the throne and bhishma knew all this but unfortunately he tried his best and he could not do anything that's very bad of him he tried everything whatever he could have done and whatever he could have not he tried everything but still that is not what lord krishna wanted lord krishna wanted that this war happens and all the miscreants are slain especially headed by duryodhana dushasana shakuni and karna and all these personalities that they be killed only then dharma can be restored yes headed by yudhishthira maharaj himself so that's what bhishma try to do always but didn't happen but he still remains the favorite character from mahabharat for many 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 people i know and he's one of the most central characters and the most important thing which he demonstrates is at the end of his life the last day when he is leaving he is in his uh, arrow bed and he is about to leave his body and then he chants beautiful prayers in exclusive glorification of lord krishna so those prayers are there in the mahabharat so if you get a chance then it is uh, very recommended that we go and read it okay so then we will be very much enlightened and bishma always remembers this that oh on the ninth day how lord krishna had taken that wheel and he ran towards me you know? <laughs> so he says that is the footage that is the as you said a display pic <laughs> so that is the image which i want to carry when i depart to the spiritual world and by seeing lord krishna's beautiful face and his transcendental spiritual form he departed from this world leaving behind a legacy yes so anybody who listens to bhishma's story who knows bhishma will always say yes the life which you led that is the life which i want to live yes that is the life of legacy which you have left for all of us and his instructions are there time and again and again and again in the mahabharat so we have to read the entire mahabharat to know this and 
that's it i can go on and on speaking but time is very limited it's already 20 minutes okay there you go until next time another video on the bhagavad gita so now this series will be started again so many of you had requested me that why did you stop the series no 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 i didn't stop it's going to start again now okay so queen kunti prayers are coming and the uh, characters from the mahabharat they are also coming okay until next time if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribe then please subscribe and if you want me to make any other video then let me know in the comments okay and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website and that's it god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there and always remember that bhishma pitama exemplified following of principles that we should always do that which is right irrespective of the the situations are favorable or they are not favorable okay so that is what bhishma pitama exemplifies so let us learn the lessons which bhishma wants to teach us okay so until next time with another character wish you good luck bye bye